there's a whole lot of nothing under those trees, but could be cruising those banks looking for the cicadas falling in. Yep, that's exactly what he was doing. I'm gonna put that June topwater bundle to work right away. I haven't been out to the honey hole in a couple of months. Been out doing ABF tournaments, trying to qualify for the national championships, couple charity tournaments. See some pads starting to come up too. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna start out with the new version of the Patriot. I'm just gonna take my sweet time going down this dam. We'll hit that far shoreline with a jig, a Tokyo rig, and we're gonna throw lots of topwaters around those pads. I think dark's good. Go ahead and get our net down here for a little walking the dog action. I haven't seen any chasing or herding any busting yet, but we shall see if we can entice a bite or two. I don't think I've caught a topwater fish this year yet. I think my last one was last summer, a big one on a buzz bait. But we will see what we can find. This monster bass patriot walks like a champ. I guess my grandpa always told me when I was little, when you were doing a topwater, it's a walking bait or a popping bait. Throw it out and let the ripples get away and then start. And you just got to play around with your retrieve until you figure out what cadence and what twitch of the rod tip actually gets that good walking back and forth action. Then you know how to repeat it. Kind of want to get over here parallel to the bank so I can cast down and see if we can catch them pushing bait fish up against these rocks that happen to be in the water that I will throw the baited jigs around. Today I brought a thunder cricket from the monster bass bundle. Brought a bunch of different baits that I never throw so I can test them out because if I bring all of my favorites with me well, I won't throw anything but them. I am really surprised. I I have not seen a single bait fish being chased yet. No topwater bite. Now one of the things you do want to do is have a soft plastic of some sort, like a wacky rig, rigged up and ready to go someplace where you can grab when you're fishing topwaters. Because if you have a fish swipe at it and miss the topwater, a lot of the times you can catch that fish by throwing that wacky rig around it. Two hours later. All right, we're gonna throw this new uh, monster bass jig. It's a tungsten hand tied little football jig. I got the X-Zone Adrenaline Craw that came with my Monster Bass bundle. So I have been looking forward to getting out here and throwing these jigs around. Water is slightly stained, but this more natural color and that tail that I dripped in the chartreuse juice. I should give them plenty to see. If not, we'll move to a black and blue, but I could probably just try to take my tail. See what, that tungsten jig head, it's a small jig, but that's a heavy weight. You can you can really feel it dragging it through the stuff. It's super sensitive. Now, I don't spend a lot of time around trees that look like they've just fallen in the water. I don't know if it's the like the dying vegetation under the water. Maybe fish don't like as much, but I don't feel like I've caught very many fish under recently fallen trees as opposed to you know to some that have been there for a while and it's basically just the limbs underneath but it could just be me too and that's one thing you're doing when you're bass fishing is you want to figure out what your patterns are going to be and adjust these may fish may not be pushed up under the into these shady spots yet because the sun is not directly overhead but again i'm still looking out at the water and it's glass smooth nobody's chasing nothing is that a fish it might have been a crappie pulling my tail. I don't think it was swimming with it, which is why I was so hesitant. So we definitely have established the crappie bite. Yeah, them crappie love love pulling the pinchers off of your craw baits. I'll tell you that much. So we figured out where the small bass and the crappie are. <laughs> There's one of those brood X cicadas in the water. Maybe these bass are full from eating all of them. <laughs> Maybe they think our uh, adrenaline craw here will be a, a big old cicada. Big old bass just come up and mash it. Skadoosh. I hear another one up there. Rawr, 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 rawr. And he's starting to get fired up. I should probably hurry up and get around that corner. I bet those bass are back there in the shade. Let's grab this Thunder Cricket real quick and put a Yamamoto Zeko that's green pumpkin to match that Thunder Cricket, but it's also got some white on the bottom. That might be a fish. Little one should have known. I went to go set the hook and the whole everything moved. But that tells me there's fish around these, these pads sitting around the edges of them yeah these bass are up in these shady spots already warm as it's starting to get another skater oh, that skater got that skater got nailed as soon as it hit the water you don't want to be in here little guy you fish are back here ain't you
Little guy, ate the thunder cricket. Yep, should have known you guys would be back here. Take care of munching on these cicadas. Go hit some of the shade while there still is some. Get this jig under some of these branches. I think they're feeding on these cicadas. Oh yeah, let's skip a football head. There's a whole lot of nothing under those trees, but they could be cruising those banks looking for the cicadas falling in. Yep, that's exactly what he was doing. Oh, you feel a little better. You feel a whole lot better. A big one who wants to jump, huh? Nice fish. Monster bass jig. Well, we pretty much called that shot. Said throw it in there in the shade and see if we can find one eating those cicadas falling off the tree and first cast under there, boom. Caught one on the other side of the tree with the thunder cricket. So that little shady bank right here where the creek pushes in against the bank. Almost textbook. If you study your maps and you can find those spots. If you're fishing from a bank, a kayak, or boat, it doesn't matter. If you can find where a creek bends in close to the bank and fish that little shallow spot between the creek channel and the bank. You know, I'm sitting four feet of water and there's probably a shelf that's like a foot or so deep right there. Those bass will come out of the creek and feed and they do that. So if there's a threat they can rush right back to deep water but if you go back and watch some of my videos when i was fishing up here early in the year when it was still cold out I talked a lot about using google maps to find spots just like this because they're not random there's a reason bass go where they go and if you study and learn the basics like that it'll save you a lot of time just wandering around making random casts now if you're fishing ponds and retention ponds obviously that's all you have you know there's a hole that they filled up with water and that's a retention pond in your complex because they needed some place for that rainwater to run off to. So, you know, probably somewhere out in the middle is deep. And along the edges, it's shallow. But what I'm talking about is places like this that have been dammed up. Or, you know, natural lakes that have spots like this. You have to just for your body of water. See, I always try to fish an area where I catch a bass. Because bass are schooling fish. They like hanging out together. So I've caught two under this tree already. There's probably another one, two, or ten under there. Oh, this heat's really playing havoc with our cameras. So I'm having to go from the... The chesty to the back one back and forth but what i was saying if i catch a fish in an area i just i don't just move on automatically if there was one there there are probably more because on the other side of the tree is where we caught that first fish on the thunder cricket and we came over here do the jig under the sh in the shady spot and then caught that three pounder out of there all right we're trying to keep our cameras running but the heat's playing a little havoc with us but I'll tell you what, this uh, this monster bass jig with the X-Zone Adrenaline Crawl, it's like a combo written in heaven. Perfect pairing. Oh, and I'm, apparently I'm stuck against the tree that I'm currently fishing. That's not a good combination. But I mean, yeah, this is a perfect color combination right now. The water's just stained, but the red might be triggering their cicada luncheon. Look at that, he hit that coming right off that tree. There's another one. That monster bass jig, tell you what, I'm impressed. Another one right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, I think we found him, boys. Get him back in the water. That's the combo right there. Double jam not doing its job. It's funny, I came out to try to shoot a topwater video. Wasn't no topwater bite. Monster bass jig doing the trick. And folks, I ain't just out here playing to be a shill for monster bass. They took the time to send the baits for me to review so that I could also take them and put them in the veterans care packages because they wanted to support that project. And in return, all I did was I said I would do a review of the bag. I didn't say I'd fish their products. I didn't say I'd do anything with them other than do an unboxing video. But since I appreciate the fact that they took the time to support our veterans, I spent my money and bought that jig. I spent my money and bought a refill of the adrenaline crawls that came in one of the bundles i spent my money from one of the texts i got from rick's vip list on that striking bundle why because i love me some striking 
<laughs> and that was a great price so again i'm not out here shilling for monster bass but i will promote saving money and support those who support the efforts that my brother and i are trying to do with these veteran care packages did i buy me a monster bass hat some stickers put on my kayak and boat yep because i like what they do would i ever take a dime for monster bass as pay in my pocket nope takes away my objectivity now when you hear people talk about pitching and flipping this is actually flipping pitchings when you just kind of like slow roll cast it without taking any line in your hand if you grab it like this then i'm flipping it in there if i'm just making a soft cast that's pitching the more you know i'm gonna have to put a little bit of somebody keeps tapping it somebody keeps tapping that's got to be a bluegill crappie though yeah because they're not getting the hook they're just grabbing one end of it that's normally the telltale sign of a crappie he'll just grab the tail and start swimming with it but if he's down there there's probably some bass crappie again after you've been fishing for a while you'll learn the difference because the bass they'll suck it in and you'll feel the the pressure from the bass sucking it into his gills and then shutting his mouth around it versus just a bunch of little brrr that a crappie will do and then just you know swim with it but i think this adrenaline crawl will probably be better up under that tree because it has that red in it looking like the cicadas i'll throw this in there a couple more times another crappie crappie again now if my line was taken off then i knew it was a bass that hit it at an angle yeah i can see actually i saw some bluegills right there all right, put this adrenaline crawl on a Tokyo rig. It's like a four out hook with a Monster Bass 5 16 tungsten on it. We can throw it in and around these pads. But what I need to do is make this rod a designated heavy hitting rod like this and put some braid on this Daiwa pitching and flipping reel. That way when we're jacking around in these braids with this Dobbins Fury stick, we'll let that braid do the work and muscle these fish out of there. So I think the idea is we're going to drop this in between these pads. But we're also going to throw a drop shot around the edges of these pads. And we're going to throw a frog into these pads. And we start hearing them uh, feeding on stuff. But that took a funny jump in my hand. So either I hit the ledge, which yeah, I think I did. The ledge of the creek channel. Never thrown the Tokyo rig before. So I'm going to have to learn the technique, the feel. You know, is this a line watching thing? You know, what does it feel like as opposed to a jig or a Texas rig when a bass actually hits it? But today it's hot and nasty and I, I only brought a limited number of baits. A bunch of different monster bass baits that I'm testing out. And a new technique, this Tokyo rig obviously. Because if you only do what you always do, you won't learn anything new. And today I want to learn some new things. So I learned that the monster bass football jig and the X zone adrenaline crawl I knew it was as good as I thought it would be now I haven't caught a lot of bladed jig fish yet throwing this the thunder cricket whereas I would always throw a jackhammer or a chatterbait I throw jackhammers during tournaments I throw a chatterbait anytime I'm just fishing for fun just because even though I try to buy them at a discount you know you do lose them and I don't want to be losing you know tournament quality stuff while I'm out fun fishing making videos that being said I won't give the thunder cricket a fair shot if if, uh, if I bring my chatterbaits with me, I'm going to throw this uh, Tokyo rig into that tree a couple of times just because somebody's still under there eating those bugs. I'm going to start working the shady side of these lily pads. And I'm also going to find the creek channel where it runs into these pads. And I'm going to play with this Tokyo rig and a drop shot for a few minutes, but I really want to catch a frogfish. You know what I said I was going to punch with this thing. If I'm going to go pick around the outside edges at first, I'm going to do it with the drop shot. Just let me put it down there on the bottom and shake that little X zone bait around in the water. And yeah, I'm throwing this drop shot on my crankbait rod right now. I'm in the middle of getting ready to test out a new reel for my spinning stuff. And, uh, uh oh, do we really? Oh, that's a good fish. That X zone came through again. I'm glad I got my drag set a little loose. Actually, I'm in a kayak. I need to back up and get him away from them pads. That's only. 10 or 12 pound line i don't want him getting in there where he can break that off and he threw it jumping fish man they'll get you break your hearts every time <laughs> but i almost don't know if he had the weight that's a good sign though fish are in there that was a good couple of pounder crappie was playing with it 
I need to get out of this because if I catch a big one in here, I'm going to be screwed. <laughs> Can I get him out of these pads? All right. They're in here. Look at that monster bass coming through again. The Daiichi hook and the X zone. Pro Slammer, I think it is. <laughs> Look at here, Monster Bass doing it again. There we go. Drop shot getting it done. That Daiichi hook. Booyah, little pounder, pound in the hand. Get you back in the water. All right, drop shot getting it done. I actually got him out of those weeds, that 12-pound seagar. Saved me. The thing I love about the drop shot is you put it, you get it where you want it, and you can just kind of leave it there and shake it, make it dance. If they were, if they're in the area, they'll come get it. Yep, somebody had it. You just never know where those fish could be. I'm doing my best to watch my line, but a lot of today's modern fishing lines are pretty much invisible in the water, and then also hard to see on the top. So one of the advantages... And one of the reasons why I, you know, should have taken the time yesterday to string up my spinning rod was to put the high-vis braid on it so I can see the line moving sideways in the water, but then it's on a leader down below and invisible to the fish. But, you know, there's not always enough hours in the day, that's for sure. You know, someday when old Gramps retires, I'll have time to do all that stuff and make videos and edit videos. But now I try to squeeze as much in as I can between work, my grandbabies, my kids, my wife. But there will be times when you see me not make videos if you know a week or so because <laughs> or at least posting videos it'll be because i'm with my family making the very memories that i'm always talking about will we make some videos of that i'm sure i feel like my line is moving <laughs> hey crappy hello there how are you You're so tiny. <laughs> yep, that's right. So I don't just do unboxing videos. I actually show you me using the baits at the right time in the right conditions to catch some fish. It's about learning, knowing when and where and how to fish eats of the baits but you can do that if you have the baits all right it's after lunch it's 90 something degrees my cameras don't want to work in the heat so until next time go outside when you can take a friend make some memories one cast at a time